Your safety on the mat is very important. You should be able to train at any time with anyone without the fear of getting hurt. But in the real world, this is just not the case. Accidents happen and honestly dickheads are everywhere. And for some reason martial art gyms are just magnets for these people. Some of these people just don't know how to dial it down and some of them are just there to hurt people. In the perfect world, people should not be hurting each other. But that is just not the case so you have to look after yourself and be careful who you're rolling with. If you're going to be rolling with someone who is really rough and you can potentially get hurt from them, especially at the beginning, you might want to avoid them for a little bit until you're comfortable enough to roll with them. I'm not saying that you should avoid them altogether but you should roll with them once in a while but not enough that where you can actually get hurt. And just to put it out there, you don't have to roll with people if they call you out. You can decline roles. And of course, you know yourself the best. Your health and your safety comes first every single time. I'll say it'll be pretty similar when you're rolling with bigger people. Someone who is 20 to 30 pound or 10 to 15 kilos heavier than you, you have the choice of declining a roll with them. Like I said before, it's not an excuse to avoid rolling with bigger people altogether. Once in a while, it's good. But at the same time, don't be too pressured and thinking that you can't decline. Rolling with someone that is that much heavier than you isn't too useful a lot of the time. You won't learn a lot from them and they will just smash you. And you actually risk getting injured if you're not prepared for it. But again, it's a good way to challenge yourself once in a while. Now, if you actually have an existing injury, you might need to be careful with who you roll with. I recommend not rolling with anyone rough or bigger than you. Of course, unless you can trust them, but otherwise I reckon it's a no-go. I recommend rolling with someone who is probably the same size as you or even smaller if possible. And of course, communicating with your partners is very important about your injuries. So this way they can look after you and not make it worse. And of course, if something feels weird, tap out early, stop and reset. And of course, if your injuries actually got worse during rolling or after the roll, I'll highly recommend you to stop pushing your luck and just don't roll and have a rest day. Having one rest day or two is better than being off the mat for months or weeks. It is your responsibility to tap out early and if you do feel something weird, you have to tap out. There's nothing wrong with tapping out early and there's nothing wrong tapping out to someone who in a lower belt. Like I said many times before, your safety and your health comes first every single time. You don't want to have a broken arm just because you're too stubborn or have too much ego to tap out. I find it weird that there's guys out there who refuse to be tapped up by someone smaller, someone in a lower belt and even girls. I've seen guys refusing to tap out when they're wrong with girls. I saw a girl almost breaking someone's arm because a person refused to tap out to an armbar. It's silly, it's stupid, and it's just not worth it. If the injury is bad enough, you probably have to live with it for a couple of months or even for the rest of your life. And of course, to reduce injuries, you can do some stretching and weightlifting outside of jiu-jitsu. Having muscles wrapped around your joints will actually help you and be more resistant to actually getting injured. So if you're someone who never lifts weight before jiu-jitsu, it's probably a good idea to start lifting a little bit of weight on the side so your muscles can actually hold on to your joint so you're a little bit more resistant to injuries. And of course, having a little bit more muscles on your body will help you and your jiu-jitsu as well. But at the same time, when you're getting more muscles, you will lose a bit of flexibility and that's where stretching comes in. Having more mobility is always good for jiu-jitsu. And of course, recovery. To recover, you need to sleep well and eat well. So if you're training three to five times a week and not eating well, you're going to feel it on the mats. You'll find that recovery will be slow, you'll be more prone to injuries, and if you do get little injuries, it'll take forever to um, recover. And of course, you'll feel more tired on the mats. You have to schedule in rest days and you have to stick with it. Anyways, I hope this video helped you with um, avoiding a bit of injuries in jiu-jitsu. If I missed anything, I'm sure I have, uh, just leave it in the comments below. And thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.